Right on time for Hope TV News Watch on this 22nd day of March 2024. A very good evening to you and welcome to the broadcast. My name is Gloria Musimbi and on the sign language interpretation is Boniface Mirithi. Now, News Watch begins. The Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, KNCHR, has today released its findings about the Shakahola tragedy. The report, labeled as Mashakaya Shakahola, reveals findings by the Commission including key observations and recommendations to duty bearers concerning the tragic case. Navarion Keton Diego begins this bulletin with that report. In order to ensure transparency, accountability, and justice for the victims of Shakahola, the National Human Rights Commission, KNHRC, initiated an investigation into the killings of Shakahola from March 2023 up until now. The chairperson of the commission, Roslyn Odede, has stated that through the investigation, the commission received allegations of torture, inhumanity, and cruelty against the survivors of the Shakahola massacre. The Constitution confers on everyone the right to freedom of conscience, religion, belief, and opinion. This right, however, does not extend to extremist ideologies and practices that would include the destruction of property, violence, killings, and violation of other human rights. The state failed to protect its citizens from harm and abuse of their constitutionally granted rights by failing to ensure that religion is used to affect public safety, order, health, fundamental rights, and freedoms of others. Emphasizing on the importance of upholding human rights, Roslyn highlighted how the prolonged delay of the case has significantly hindered access to justice. In response to this pressing concern, the Commission is urging the Director of Public Prosecutions to expedite legal proceedings against suspects involved. Autopsy reports reveal that the main causes of the deaths were starvation, strangulation, head injury, and dehydration. All these are consistent with narratives from the survivors and witnesses on the happenings in the Shakahola Ranch prior to the discovery of the mass graves. Two is the right to dignity and freedom from torture, cruel, inhumane, and degrading treatment. The deceased and the survivors had their human dignity debased while being subjected to torture, cruel and inhuman treatment, contrary to Articles 28 and 29 of the Constitution and the Prevention of Torture Act 2017. Needless to say, the diseased were buried in, buried in shallow graves in the absence of their relatives and without befitting cultural and religious rights. Three is the freedom and security of the person the negligence and failure of the criminal justice system, which released Mackenzie severally or failed to exp expedite hearings against him, and also the failure by the national security and administration structures left the followers exposed to harm, injury and abuse. The KNHRC report highlights the delay in justice as a violation of victims' rights, condemning the prolonged detention of approximately 95 suspects. The commission recommends various actions such as exhuming more bodies, expediting the investigation and returning victims' bodies to their families. So based on these findings the human rights and human rights violations, the commission recommends as follows. To the Cabinet Secretary for Interior and National Administration, we recommend one, to, that he immediately orders the resumption of the, of the pending exhumations to facilitate the conclusion of investigations and release of the bodies to their next of kin for burial and closure. Two, to bring to account all security officers and National Administration officers whose acts of omission and commission abetted and aided the Shakahola massacre. This should include charging them with criminal neg negligence and individual responsibility. Additionally, the Commission aims to address the rights of victims held in detention by advocating for counseling services for them. Furthermore, the KNHRC urges Parliament to enact legislation to regulate religion, thereby mitigating the potential recurrence of similar cases in the future. We also ask Parliament to call for, the com for complete and accurate disclosure 
and release of information and data relating to the Shakahola tragedy that is in the custody of the state. To the Attorney General, uh, we ask that they review the Prevention of Terrorism Act, which erodes constitutional safeguards on the rights of persons deprived of liberty on indeterminate pre-charge. About a year has now passed since the Shakahola murder case captured headlines following the grim discovery of multiple bodies buried in shallow graves in Shakahola Forest located in Chakama, Kilifi County. KNHRC now wants justice to prevail. The general public has been advised to refrain from religious extremisms while religious leaders have been encouraged to work closely with government agencies in order to ensure freedom of worship that does not cause harm or lead to loss of lives. Reporting for Hope TV News Watch, my name is Kate and Diego. Thank you, Kate, for that report. And as Kenya joins other nations to celebrate World Water Day today, the government has urged private water suppliers to collaborate with them to ease the challenge of water shortage in the country. According to the Chief Executive Officer of Water Services Regulatory Board, Dr. Julia Situnga, the government is working hard to ensure that every Kenyan has access to clean water come 2030. Itunga has also highlighted that they are currently dealing with water rationing in slum areas such as Kangwari, Nairobi, and that's why they are calling on the private sector to cooperate. He has also cautioned Kenyans on water theft, saying the culprits will be charged harshly when found. Thank you. The World Water Day is a day that is set aside uh, to really think about water as life. You know, as I started saying, water is life. Sure. I don't know whether there is a day or an hour that passes without you using, interacting with water yeah, in any form. In any form. Sure. Yeah? So, uh, the, the, the United Nations uh, designated the 22nd day of March every year to be World Water Day. And this day is celebrated worldwide, world over rather. And this is basically to create awareness about the importance of water. We monitor the hour of service that uh, the water companies supply within their service area. So for instance, in Kawangware, Nairobi Water and Sewerage Company is the one responsible for supplying people in Kawangware. And uh, it is true, really, because we don't have adequate, adequate water. You know, any commodity, when it is scarce, there are problems. The government is encouraging what we are calling public-private partnerships, so that the private sector can also come in, uh, bring in resources and develop water sources, so that we can be able to supply more. And at the moment the commodity is in good supply, yeah. then obviously the issue of uh, uh, rationing will, will likely be the thing of the first, so it will be minimized to a range extent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Elsewhere, First Lady Mama Rachel Ruto celebrated World Water Day 2024 at Kisaju Primary School in Kajado County, where she donated harvesting tanks to 20 primary and secondary schools in Kajado West constituency to enable the institutions to increase their water shortage capacity. The First Lady further committed to improving the welfare of learners by working with leaders and partners to ensure all public primary and secondary schools have sufficient clean drinking water. Kwa tukifanya katika ofisi yangu na siku ya leo tumesema kuwa tunataka kupatia institutions ambaye ni primary schools na secondary schools. Na siku ya leo ni mwanzo tu ambaye tumeanza tutapeana uh, mtungi ya maji ambaye ni ya lita elfu tatu kwa mashule ya msingi 25 na shule moja ya upili ambaye nafikiria ni mambo ni shule yetu ya Kisaju Secondary mambo ya boholes mumeweza kuuliza kama pengine tunaweza kuwasaidia na boholes tatu hiyo napatia ofisi yangu ili tuhakikishe kwamba hizo boholes tatu 
zimefika kwa sababu Mungu ametubariki kwa ajili ya hiyo ofisi tuko na washika dao wengi ambao wanakuja kutuuliza kama wanaweza kufanya mambo fulani eh, kwa watu wa Kenya na hiyo borehole ni mo, eh, boreholes ni moja na mimi nataka kuahidi kwamba kwa majaliwa yake Mwenyezi Mungu we shall deliver those three boreholes Moving on swiftly, Interior Cabinet Secretary Kithure Kindiki says 242 people have so far been arrested and arraigned over the sale of illicit alcohol and drugs in Meru, Tarakanithi and Embu counties. Kindiki, who met top security chiefs from these three counties, say that each county has to develop a sustainable long-term plan tailored to tackle challenges for the country to succeed in the fight against illicit alcohol and drug abuse. He noted that in in Embu alone, 116 persons were arrested and prosecuted. 296 alcohol selling premises licensed contrary to the law shut, and 270 rolls of bag of bang were seized. Now, very own Nelia Swanjiru reports. In the fight against illicit alcohol and substance abuse, Interior CS Kidure Kindiki has said they have adopted measures for the reduction of crime, maintenance of law and order, and the monitoring and evaluation, as well as schedule for reporting the same. Kindiki noted that the Rakanidi County is among the most affected counties by the menace of illicit alcohol, narcotic drugs, and psychotropic substances. He said the situation has largely undermined the socioeconomic progress of the county. The CS said since the start of the eradication program, 11,000 liters of illicit alcohol and 300 rolls of bank have been needed. At least 126 persons have also been arrested and arraigned. The people are involved in destroying the Kenyan population through drugs and illicit killer brush. Their time is up and we have a national-wide enforcement measures which we, are, we announced on 6th of March this year uh, in Nairobi and therefore we are going around the country to see the progress made. So far, there is a bit of progress. We've discussed with my colleagues here, the county security and intelligence team. We've made some progress. We've arrested, um, seized over 300 rolls of bang. We have also arrested uh, over 100 people, and uh, uh, 44 of them have already been uh, taken to court. They are at various stages of prosecution. The others, we are completing investigations and we'll be charging them in due course. Kindiki, who said that during his meeting with the county security health, added that they agreed on targets for education of illicit alcohol and other drugs, which is a priority program. He said they also set targets for the other law enforcement priorities and coordination of national government programs. A few days ago, the state announced 25 measures it will implement to eradicate the menace of drugs and illicit alcohol in Kenya. We will be announcing in two weeks' time a new um, measures of how many of them will be licensed again, depending on uh, uh, passing the threshold for quality control and public health and safety concerns. And uh, we have also given other measures, up, up to 25 measures, that will make it impossible for people to use the space of manufacturing second generation alcohol to kill the people of Kenya. We have directed that ethanol be denatured so that it becomes impossible for it to be diverted to distilleries. It can only be used for industrial use and not for alcoholic beverages. And that uh, those 25 measures are in place. We have also asked uh, public officers who own bars to close them, especially public officers who are involved in law enforcement. Kindiki has been on a tour of the counties as the government stepped up for the fight against illicit alcohol and drug abuse in the country, where he has pledged to take alcohol addicts to rehabilitation centers to rescue the future generation from the menace. The program is being led by the Minister of Interior and other key stakeholders. <laughs> Same ya Ronyenges, same ya Mbere, Kiritiri, Siakago. Na hiyo mambo yote ya bangi, tunamaliza. Na wale ambao ni waraibu, tutawapeleka rehabilitation. The government will take every addict to rehabilitation, restore them to normalcy so that they can go back and contribute to national development and raise their families, take care of their children, and become responsible people.
So upon the automification, this matter is no longer a social issue, it's not an economic issue, it's a national security matter. And this is not a, a temporary operation for months or for a year or for two. We will do it forever, as long as the problem exists. The CS has said for the country to succeed in suppressing the manufacture, distribution and sale and consumption of killer brews, narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances, each county has to develop a long-term sustainable plan that is suited to the local dynamics of the matter. Reporting for Hope TV News Watch, my name is Nelias Wanchir. And with Nelias' report, we take a short commercial break. Stay tuned for more news updates. In order to keep hope alive in the airwaves, Hope Media has a couple of initiatives. Friends of Hope. Friends of Hope is you and I forming a team of well-wishers and volunteers who give in cash and kind to support in spreading the gospel at Hope Media. Currently, Hope Media is running a campaign under Friends of Hope dubbed 100 for 1. Through the campaign, Hope Media is asking Hope FM and Hope TV listeners and viewers to give just 100 shillings in order to reach one more soul with the message of hope and the gospel. Engage with us on our social media platforms at Hope FM Live and at Hope TV Kenya. Kuwa Rafikim So Leo. Thank you for choosing Hope TV, the channel that brings you hope, entertainment, and inspiration. We value you and would like to serve you better. Talk to us by scanning this QR code on your screen or go to our social media page at Hope TV Kenya and click on the survey link by the name Hope TV Survey. It will just take a few minutes but means the world to us. We value your feedback. Hope TV, look and live. Hope TV is where you look and live. With an excellent selection of the best Christian programming consisting of local and international content of inspirational stories, talk shows, Bible commentary, youth, health shows, children entertainment, contemporary gospel music, extended times of worship, live broadcast, news, movies, drama, Christian ministry programs, and so much more. Hope TV is another quality service from Christ is the Answer Ministries with over 45% of authentic and credible local content every week. Hope TV is a sister station to Hope FM, Kenya's leading Christian radio station with footprints across the country. Tune in to Hope TV, where you look and live. Welcome back to the broadcast. Now moving on swiftly through the Kenya National Qualifications Authority, KNQA, the recognition of prior learning policy, RPL, has been launched with hundreds of immigrants, refugees and Juakali artisans set to be among the beneficiaries. Speaking at the launch of the RPL at KICC, Deputy President Trigadi Gashagwa identified Juakali artisans as the bedrock of the country's economy and stated that going forward, the formal sector will not be discriminated against the lack of certification. Our very own Bran Mugambi with that report. It is indeed a great day for RPL graduates after the launch of the recognition of prior learning policy RPL at KICC today. RPL, a process that is used to identify, assess, and certify an individual's knowledge, skills, and competencies against prescribed standards of learning outcomes, regardless of when, where, and how they were acquired, opens a new chapter for Juakali artisans and workers in the informal sector, as this will give them access to available job opportunities and institutions of higher learning, all geared towards economic turnaround and inclusive growth. In accordance with the National Employment Authority portal. Working together with the private recruitment agencies, we have over 250,000 jobs available in the Western European countries and other countries abroad. Kwa hivyo nataka ni seme kazi hizi ni zenyu, sio kupanua uchumi wa Kenya peke yake, lakini nyinyi muende hata ngambo, that which have been said by my colleague. 
speaking at the launch deputy president regadi gashagua wewe utatoka nje ungangana na wanaume wengi on the past discriminations of the informal sector gashagua stated that going forward there will be an eradication of barriers in the market space after the launch of rpl which now has the informal sector graduates certified accredited and recognized both at a national and international level in recognition and confirmation of the ability of our artisans who are the bedrock of our economy we have elevated their profession and dignified them for what they do best not the paper they lack Gashagwa also did point out that the implementation of the Kenya Kwanza program of affordable housing will create more job opportunities for artisans in the quest to cut down on importation of labor. Gashagwa also commended the cabinet secretary of education Ezekiel Mashogu for championing the implementation of RPL whose documents had been left unattended to in the office for the past 4 years. Wale walikuwa nasema at the hustler narrative was not real. This is what the hustler narrative is all about. All these people, all these started eight people and from four people who have skills, who have competencies and nobody recognizes them belong to the hustler nation. And this is their government and their government is recognizing them for who they are, for who they know, for the skills they possess, for the competencies that they have. Your Excellency, when you and the Section and the President of the Republic of Kenya, uh, William Samai Ruto, appointed me as the Cabinet Secretary of Education, one of the documents that I found in the office, which had been, had been there for the last four years, was this particular policy. I had an opportunity with my team to go through this particular policy, and I said yes, This is where the answer is. This is where the solution is to the kind of problems we have and the challenges as a country particularly pertaining to our young people. The CEO of the Federation of Kenya Employers, Jacqueline Mugo, has promised to sensitize employers on RPL graduates, adding that the market space had a vacancy which was hard to fill due to the high demand of market supply, but few laborers as most skilled workers were uncertified. However, following their certification, the RPL graduates will now have expanded job opportunities and can now enroll in high institutions of learning. Reporting for Newswatch, I am Brian Mugambi. And on educational matters, the Nakuru County Assembly has announced a 10 million commitment to support the continuation of the EIDU digital learning program across all early childhood development education ECDE centers within the county. The commitment applies to the financial year 2024 to 2025. AEIDU is a social business that partners with national and county governments to activate and achieve their educational goals and implement policy around digital learning. In Akuru, the program has been under implementation since September 2023, leading to key outcomes in digital learning for over 40,000 learners across 1,000 ECD centers. Unaona wengi wako kila mtoto anaharakisha kuandika haraka ndiposa aweze kutumia hiyo simu inafanya watoto wawe na tamaa na waendelee kwa masomo unaona inasaidia watoto wengi venye tungekuwa na hali ya shinda mtoto hataki kuandika haraka kila mtoto anaandika haraka ndiposa apate hiyo nafasi ya kutumia simu ya hidi Halafu muhimu mwingine unaona hata wakati wa kwenda nyumbani watoto wa, watamani kwenda haraka wanakuwa wakiambia mwalimu mimi tacha sijatumia simu. Kwa hivyo tumeona imekuwa ya maana sana na imewasaidia sana kwa masomo. Na imefanya watoto wawe na wawe na hiyo knowledge and uh, they've become even sharper because this program makes make, makes learning very easy. And they have also observed that the teacher is also able to monitor how the learning is going on and that platform is also giving the government officials an opportunity to also monitor how learning is taking place um, in these ECD centers.
And on local business news, Cabinet Secretary for Information, Communications and Digital Economy, Elio Dawalo, has called on the youths in TVETS to embrace online platforms that they can use to earn as they learn. Speaking at Nyandarwa National Polytechnic, during the Jitume Digital Laboratory and Wi-Fi launch at the institution, the CS stated that over 3,900 youths have been trained and has created 135,000 jobs, arguing that the country is on the right track in matters curbing unemployment. On his part, Nyandaro Governor Kiarie Badilisha expressed his gratitude, saying that the students has had embraced the Jitume digital hubs and they are making it, and they are making great use of it. The Kenya Kwanzaa government has developed this program called Jitume, whose objective is twofold. One is to undertake digital skilling of the youth. But most importantly and fundamentally, to ensure that we empower our youth through digital jobs. The white collar jobs today are unlimited, are limited, if not non existent. And the only space where we have got unlimited opportunities is the digital space. This Jitume digital program, Good People, is a game changer because it gives you the opportunity to start earning while leveraging on digital platforms while you are still a student. We have talked to these students here, and it is amazing the abundance of opportunities that we have on digital platforms. We are happy the students of this institution have taken that program very well. We were so happy when we went there with Waziri and students came out telling us we are learning and we are working. And that is the best you can expect from a government. I want to give you an assurance. The way we are working, the county government and the national government, the way we are relating and our core business this time is to try and fight with the employment of our youth. Yangu ni kusema ya kwamba tashirikiana na management ya National Polytechnic hii kuhakikisha kwamba yale chairman ya student amezungumzia mambo ya usalama tutaangalia kabisa. Mimi bado ni mgeni kidogo nimekaa tu mwezi mmoja hapa lakini nimesikia kuna hiyo changamoto tutashirikiana bwana principal kuhakikisha kwamba watoto wetu wasikuwe na hiyo concern ya kusumbuliwa wakati wanafanya eh, kazi yao Still on Youth Matters, Big Kenya through its Wembesha campaign brought excitement to the Catholic University of East Africa Choir as it hosted students in several interactive acti activities, including a panel discussion on confidence and wellness. Together, they shared profound insights and personal experiences on building confidence, overcoming mental challenges in their daily lives, as students and cultivating self-assurance. During the panel discussions, perspectives on confidence-building strategies were also shared, encouraging students to embrace their individuality. Now, most people take clean water for granted. A report by the World Health Organization, WHO, and United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, released in 2019, find that 2.2 billion people, more than a quarter of the global population, still lack access to safe drinking water. These staggering numbers highlight the urgent need for global action to address water scarcity and improve access to clean water and sanitation. And as the world celebrates World Water Day this year, our reporter Alice Diana tells us how the Christian Nonprofit Organization has been sharing God's love through the gift of providing under resourced communities around the world, including Kenya, with clean, safe, and drinking water. Access to clean water is one of our most basic human needs. 
But according to statistics, one in four people in the world do not have access to safe drinking water. This is a major health risk since unsafe water is responsible for more than a million deaths each year. Climate change, growing population, outdated infrastructure, lack of knowledge and wasteful attitudes are the root cause of the problem. Lack of access to safe water sources is a leading risk factor for infectious diseases including cholera, diarrhea dysentery, hepatitis A, typhoid and polio. It also exacerbates malnutrition and in particular childhood stunting. For this reason, the Bucket Ministry, a Christian and profit organization, has committed to sharing God's love through the gift of clean, safe drinking water to all the underserved areas of the world. Founded in 2012, the Bucket Ministry began its mission in Kenya in 2018 in Kibera slums with the goal of improving health and well-being of residents by ensuring access to safe drinking water and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. To understand more how the Bucket Ministry works, I joined one of the distribution exercises that took place at Champions of Christ Church International in Sophia Village at the River Area in Machakos County. Dennis Mavia, the community liaison officer in Athi River, Machakos County, explains that the ministry is targeting slum areas as that is where there is a big need for water issues. Basically, we, we, we are all over. Actually, we are all over Kenya. We, we, we are also in Shampole, in rural place, in that's in, uh, around uh, the Maasai land. We are also in different places, but basically we are, we are targeting many slums because we understand that's where there's the need of water. Because sometimes these waters that we get in the slums, they end up mixing with sewages and other things. So we see there's a big need of water issues in the slums. So that's why we're basically targeting. Dennis says 2,000 families have so far received bucket filters in Athi River since the ministry started in that area in August last year. So how do they identify people to receive the bucket filters? We identify slums, people, uh, uh, places where there's need of water and they are drinking from contaminated uh, water sources. So we identify that need of water issues in that area. And then after that, once we are done, the assessment and everything and the budgeting is done, now when it's the day of distribution by the coming to collect the packets, we go per house, we go per, we divide them into different zones. So let's say today we are dealing with Sophia, so we'll count 200 houses from one zone. So we give them the tickets, and then that ticket is a surety that they are scheduled to come and collect the bucket. Let's say if it's Friday, so that Friday, like today, they come and show us the ticket, then we will be able to give them the, the buckets. Yeah, because uh, sometimes in slums, when you do have a systematic way, there are people who can join any time, and that affects the budgeting, and also some people might end up not getting the gift that we're giving them. Before receiving the bucket filters, the recipients are taught on how to use and maintain the filters, as well as how to wash their hands to improve their sanitation. <laughs> na imekaribu mtu 10000 Kenya shillings ile imefika hivi kwa hivyo hiyo ndio filter ndani ya hii filter kuna hisi nyuzi hisi nyuzi tu ambazo tunasiona hisi hisi nyuzi na tukiiweka katika mashine inaitwa microscope hii nyuzi inakuwa iko na pipe ndani ama ni pipe basi hiyo pipe iko na vimyenye vidogo tu ndogo ambazo zinazuia tu sinazuia bacteria kupita lakini maji yanapita ndani toka pamoja maji yanapita ndani lakini bacteria ama wale wadudu ambao wanasababisha magonjwa ambayo yanatokana na uchafu hasitapita ndani kwa hivyo sina contract sasa hivyo ndivyo hayo maana ni ye filter ilivyo na imepitia katika wizara ya afya Kenya umepima vizuri imedhibitisha kwamba ukiitumia is 99.9 if you tap with a cup of fika nyumbani, ino mali penye pame, pame inuka kiasi, kama ni kwa meza, ama kwa stuli, inua hivi, na uweke ndani maji. Kiwango chini nata kutumia. Hayo maji nata kutumia na minagani, nita kunyo hayo maji, nita pika msuake na hayo maji, nita nawa mikono na hayo maji, nita osha vyombo vya nyumba na hayo maji, tupa mwenye, nita pika na hayo maji, matunda nita osha na hayo maji, mboga nita hoi, nita osha na hayo maji, mtoto mdoko, ambaye mtoto mdogo pia ataoga na hayo maji ama utamosha na hayo maji au utaona nini skin rashes kwa mdomo mtu according to pastor ruben wanjala a missionary coach in the bucket ministry the filter can trap any type of bacteria soil and any other particles 
Here we have a caution that it cannot trap poison. Usiende kibali useme kwamba pia ina filter nini? Sumu. Ah ah. Ukiweka sumu basi kunywa sumu utakuwa. So haitoi sumu maana sumu inajitangana na maji. Tuko moja. Tena test kama ni maji ya chumvi utapata nini? Test ya chumvi. It is estimated that 2.2 billion people worldwide lack access to clean and safe water for drinking. Now, organizations such as the Bucket Ministry are trying to close this gap by introducing such filter buckets in order for Kenyans to get clean water for drinking. <sighs> now, believe it or not, the water I just drank was this way before it got filtered. If maintained well, the filter can last for over 25 years. This means that a family that has received the bucket filter can access clean, safe drinking water for the next 25 years. <laughs> After the training, the recipients are gifted the bucket filters ready to begin a new journey of accessing clean, safe water in their home states. And for those who are already using the bucket filters, they say cases of waterborne diseases are now a thing of the past in their families as they can now access safe and clean water. Kati mmoja nilitembelewa na wageni wakani kumbiria ajwe ya ndo na nikaondoka, nikaanda mali waliko niita. Tukaanda, tukapokea, nikapokea hiyo muradi ya ndo. Ndo tulumwanzo tulikuwa tunatumia maji kama ya chungwa na maji yenyewe tulikuwa tunaweka chlorine chlorine tu na tunakunywa hivyo lakini jinsi wametuvunza venye tunaweza tumia maji nimeona imetusaidia kwa familia yangu watoto walikuwa wanaumbwa na tumbo na wapeleka shuleni na wapeleka hospitalini wanahara lakini vile wamenibariki na hii ndo nimeitumia wako wazima sioni wakiwa na shida ya tumbo Kwa hifo, imuradi ni mzuri na mungu wa wabariki. And as the world celebrates World Water Day this year, both the public and private sectors have been challenged to invest in water infrastructure that expands clean water access to every individual as a human right. The Bucket Ministry has committed to addressing the physical needs of many people and change the health of entire village overnight through using a simple tool, the filter. Alice Diana, Hope TV News Watch. Now making headlines on sports news, Leicester City have been charged by the Premier League with allegedly breaking spending rules during the last three seasons in the top flight. Leicester has been referred to an independent commission for breaching profit and sustainability rules PSR and failing to submit audited finances. If found guilty, the championship high flyers could face a points deduction. The Foxes are also subject to a separate financial probe by the English Football League EFL. Top flight rules permit clubs to make losses of 105 million euros over the three-year period or 35 million euros per campaign before facing sanctions.
And with that, we come to the tail end of our news bulletin tonight. Many thanks to you for tuning in to Hope TV. A very blessed night to you. My name is Gloria Musimbi and on the sign language interpretation has been Boniface Mirithi.